October 27, 2023. Guys, a great day here this early this morning in central Mississippi. I hope everyone's having a nice day. It's getting cool up in the north, and that's going to be coming into uh, a little further south next week. We're going to have some temperatures at night dipping into the 30s, so just remember that. But it's been uh, very nice the last few weeks here. What they're saying this morning is breaking. U.S. bombs, Iranian proxy forces in Syria hours after the Iranian foreign minister threatens U.S. on U.S. soil in the United Nations speech. Didn't work out very well. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin announced Thursday night that U.S. launched attacks on two bases in Syria used by Iranian proxy forces to attack American troops based in Syria and Iraq. U.S. troops have been attacked several times this month in Iraq and Syria until this evening. Those attacks have gone unanswered by the Biden administration. About two dozen troops have been injured in the attacks. A contractor died from a heart attack during one of the assaults. Not sure why they were waiting, maybe not to build up any more tensions, or maybe they're too busy playing both sides of the cards. We'll see. And this is what uh, Secretary Austin said. He, Today, at President Biden's direction, U.S. military forces conducted self-defense strikes on two facilities in eastern Syria used by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard and affiliated groups, probably Hezbollah, other people. These precision self-defense strikes are a response to a series of ongoing and mostly unsuccessful attacks against U.S. personnel in Iraq and Syria by Iranian-backed militia groups that began on October 17th. It says, as a result of these attacks, one U.S. citizen contractor died from a cardiac incident while sheltering in place. 21 U.S. personnel suffered from minor injuries, but all have since returned to duty. The president has no higher priority than the safety of U.S. personnel, like he did in Afghanistan, remember? And he directed today's actions to clear that the United States make it clear the U.S. will not tolerate such attacks and will defend itself, its personnel, and its interests. So most of this you can basically take with a grain of salt. But, but I did see yesterday that some of these troops were hurt pretty bad and uh, were sent to Germany with our air base over there in a big hospital and uh, had concussions and other problems like that from the bombing. I just hope and pray that all our young troops uh, come home safely and get out of this uh, banker war that we're starting to see around the world. Uh, it's all about the collapse of the monetary systems of many of the nations, except Russia, it looks like they're doing pretty good. But they have to create something to take everyone's attention off of what's happening here in the U.S., both economically and at our borders. But it says the U.S. does not seek conflict and has no intention nor desire to engage in further hostilities. But these Iranian-backed attacks against U.S. forces are unacceptable and must stop. Iran wants to hide its hand and, and deny its role in these attacks against our forces. We will not let them. If attacks by Iran's proxies against U.S. forces continue, we will not hesitate to take further necessary measures to protect our people. These narrowly tailored strikes in self-defense were intended solely to protect and defend U.S. personnel in Iraq and Syria. They are separate and distinct from the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas and does not constitute a shift in our approach to the uh, Israel-Hamas conflict. Again, grain of salt. Remember, we continue to urge all state and non-state entities not to take action that would escalate into a broader regional conflict. Now, there's a link in the article to this Twitter account. It's the Iran International English Channel. And it says that in his speech, the Iran's foreign minister at the U.N. General Assembly, and he did spoke this in English, he warned the United States that you won't be spared from the fire of the war in the region if the Gaza war does not stop. I say it frankly to American statesmen. We don't welcome the expansion of war in the region, but if the genocide in Gaza continues, they won't be spared from this fire. It doesn't look like anybody's going to be spared from it if they keep on going the way they are, and I think that's the plan. And he goes on to say that the American statesmen uh, are managing the genocide in Palestine. 
He says, we do not compromise with any party and any side, and we have no reservations when it comes to our home security. The genocide in Gaza must stop immediately. The forced displacement of the people of Gaza must be stopped. Today, Gaza is waiting for urgent and vital humanitarian aid. According to international law, the Palestinian liberation movement, Hamas, is fighting the occupation and has a legitimate right. Mr. President, according to our negotiations, Hamas is ready to release civilian prisoners. Listen to this. On the other, other hand, the world should support the release of 6,000 Palestinians being held in Israeli prisons. He continued, he said, Hamas has voiced their readiness to hand over all the civilian hostages to Iran, who would then negotiate along with Qatar and Turkey their release in exchange for the release of 6,000 prisoners in the Israeli jail. Now, Libya is getting involved, guys, in it right now, and they're saying that, well, they're demanding the immediate withdrawal of the ambassadors of countries that support Israel in the war that it has launched against the Palestinian Islamist movement Hamas, referring by name to the U.S., Britain, France, and Italy. Now, Libya supplies a lot of oil and gas, too. In a statement posted on its website yesterday, the institution, close to the camp of the powerful Marshal Khalifa, Haftar also demanded the supply of Libyan hydrocarbons to these countries be suspended if the massacres of the Palestinians do not stop. We demand the ambassadors of the states that support the Zionist entity, Israel, in the crimes it commits to leave the Libyan territory immediately. He said if these massacres committed by the Zionist enemy do not stop, we demand the Libyan government suspend oil and gas exports to the states that support it. The Libyan parliament denounced in the strongest possible way the attitude of the governments of the U.S., Britain, France, and Italy. Libya, which does not recognize Israel, has been plagued by violence and political strife since Muammar Gaddafi's regime was toppled by a NATO-backed uprising in 2011, the Arab Spring. Remember that, guys? And uh, a lot went down during that period of time over one bottle that it th then uh, the defense secretary... Uh, held up in uh, Congress. Remember that? This is a weapon of mass destruction. Didn't exist. Plus, we saw a lot of migration out of these, uh, some of these countries, guys, and Europe got full. We're starting to see it into South America all the way into the southern borders. The, that series of incidents that happened back in 2011 changed the world forever, and now it's just now coming to roost. The fact of what's happening and all the devastation brought by brought about by the displacement of millions and millions of people on purpose. Now, in this dozen years or so since that has happened, guys, we've seen chaos around the world, the mass migration, immigration, things like that, countries collapsing left and right. The plan is coming together very well for the people that want total destruction and their new world order to rise out of the ashes of that. And by the way, if you haven't seen it, uh, yesterday or night before last, let me say it like that, in Israel there was ground incursions by Israeli tanks going in. They went one kilometer deep inside of Gaza, and it shows some blowing up some buildings and things like that. They had a bulldozer or two in with the tanks. It was tearing down some um, dirt embankments and gates that were, so they could push through. They went in and did whatever they were going to do, and then they came back out. It was kind of, uh, again, just one kilometer deep. And it was, they say it was like an intelligence gathering situation. But uh, we'll see how it works out, guys. Keep an eye on this. This is going to start the entire world on fire if, they not, if they're not very careful. But we're watching it. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe.